this is the last day for those of you who care at all about 1k voices merch yeah i have a i have a pretty dope shirt that got made and uh this is the last weekend ever literally ever i i, I won't bring this back for probably forever but maybe at some point for like a limited time i don't know but this is your last chance to get the 1000 voices t-shirt it's the thanks for 1k if you were a part of my first 1000 plus people i just hit 2000 followers on twitch and so my rule was that i was going to take it away at 2000 follows anyway guys hope you enjoy this video all right so now that garden of salvation has officially ended and it's been about a week it is time for me to give my opinions about the raid itself as a guy that constantly does raid sherp as a guy that constantly is doing raid challenges raid memes all that kind of stuff i think i have some kind of knowledge on what makes a great raid and what doesn't garden of salvation let's start with the first encounter the first encounter is something almost completely unique to destiny it's one where you have to move as a team constantly running through the arena and it's something that's honestly refreshing the only problem i have with it is that it suffers from the problem that morgeth had with challenge so if you are a sentinel titan and you run in and you pick up one of those voltaic overflows on the first one you can pick it up just fine on the second one if you hit your super and then you hold right click or if you just hold out the shield in general if you're on consoles you will actually be able to pick up a second one and that will break the game after that you don't even need a super to pick up the next one you can just immediately run into it and pick it up i wish that this wasn't a problem and i i hope there's some kind of fix for this but it's a cheese that allows for low man challenges, so I guess I can give it credit there. However, I do think that overall this encounter was great, and honestly, I won't ruin the surprise at the end of it. For those who haven't seen it, just trust me, if you do this raid, you're gonna love this first encounter. All right, going into the second encounter, we have the diamond. I don't even know what to call this encounter. I'm just gonna call it the diamond, right? So this encounter is pretty similar to the opening of Crown of Sorrow, where you kind of just have to slay ads and move around a little bit but mostly just slay ads however this one to me is a lot better because you're actually constantly moving from place to place it's pretty frantic and all over the place unlike crown of sorrow where you're all in the same room killing the same exact things four times over this time you're actually moving and swapping buffs you're constantly giving enlightenment you're constantly killing shieldy ads you're constantly helping with angelics so ultimately i think this is a pretty good encounter although with contest turned off and we'll get to contest Contest in a little bit with contest turned off it's a little bit tough to assess this one properly i do think though that when you're in the middle at the end of the encounter that is so much fun when the music fully ramps up it gets so intense and you're all six there slaying it really does feel like the raid comes together it felt like it was blueprinted perfectly and i honestly cannot think of a better way for that encounter to have ended now for the third encounter so this boss is the one that you have been chasing since the beginning of the raid and it's time for you to get some sweet sweet vengeance this encounter feels a little odd to me i don't know if i like this encounter i don't know if i hate this encounter i just kind of feel indifferent about it so far at the beginning you need three people on the gambit team three people on the boss team the people on boss team to me have very very little responsibility it's just kind of you jump in there you break the top or the inside outside you break left and right all that kind of stuff you just break some points on the boss for me personally i find this kind of a challenge to be a little boring on one side meanwhile the gambit team is rushing like crazy to find as many minotaurs as possible to fill the bank before the boss team maybe dies so that's where it gets a little intense and i feel like that side is missing from this so this actually opens up a discussion more about third encounters in these kind of smaller raids in general for garden of salvation crown of sorrow and for scourge of the past so far i feel like the third encounter has kind of been a little bit lackluster they're always a good build-up but not anything that's like super super memorable compared to the final boss i'm still craving that golgoroth feeling of finishing one boss and then getting right into golgoroth and then the death singers i'm, I'm still missing that feeling of another encounter maybe even being more fun for me than the final boss and i feel like this third encounter definitely hit that mark it is really satisfying if you can get a one phase and it's even more satisfying if you can push the boss off the edge and get it to fall down there 
However, I just think in general, this encounter is fun for one team and the other team it's not so fun for. Similar to how Scourge of the Past, you had to send three people under, but the people who were above didn't really do anything. They just kind of chilled there. So now we're on the final encounter. And honestly, what can I say? I think this is a perfect raid encounter. I don't think there's anything that's really bad about it, unless you play on consoles, which then you, you, you get two fp literally two fps i i'm so sorry why did they do that to you guys the thing that i really really like about this encounter is that you're never stationary and you get punished very hard for sitting still or having a relaxed moment you are always at the edge of your seat constantly when you're playing this encounter to add even more onto that it feels like this was a remastered version of atheon except done even better than atheon in Atheon from Destiny 1 Vaulted Glass, if anybody remembers this, you had to be sent in three people at a time to one of the sides. It was either the future or the past. You had to kill all the oracles in the room, cleansing your teammates, making it through the portal to meet them back, and then doing the same exact thing for another random three on the other side. So when you did get chosen, it was pretty frantic if you weren't ready to be chosen. And if you didn't get chosen, then you had to deal with the supplicants like everywhere still. So similar to how Atheon was where he would send you in and then take you out, this time you actually get to choose the people who go in. You go in, you do some gambit style stuff where you pick up 15 motes each on the teams. You need to fill up both banks with 30 motes each. And then eventually you get to do damage. However, this encounter did something that we haven't seen in raid encounters in a very very long time this encounter actually requires 99.9% .9 of teams to do minimum of two phases and most teams three phases of damage this is what I'm talking about this right here this is what I'm talking about all those auto reload changes really played a big impact with this fight in particular I cannot tell you how much happier I am knowing that we actually have to kill the boss by not sitting in a well and just roasting him immediately. It feels so good to actually have the challenge of, oh my gosh, I didn't have time to reload. Oh my gosh, I didn't get enough shots off. Oh my gosh, it means that you really have to maximize your time for DPS. It also means that you're going to need to coordinate everybody properly. What my team does, which to me is the most effective, is we send three people to be our shield breakers at the end for the damage phase two times over. So instead of it's just being one time shield break, then the other side breaks, we send the same team on both. That allows the other team to do a maximum DPS while the other three hopefully have Izanagi's ready. This also requires a lot of communication and coordination. I mean, I can tell you from doing Sherpas how many times cheesing Riven got old so quickly. Even doing legit Riven at this point, you can have sacrifices, you can have people that can basically carry and shoot all of the eyes for you. However, in this fight, you need all six people firing on all cylinders. Until there's some kind of cheese that gets discovered for this boss, this to me is literally the perfect raid encounter. A lot of people will say, well, there's a glitchy tether mechanic, there's glitchy that. Most of the time, there isn't a glitch. Most of the time, if it doesn't tether, you didn't fill your bank all the way. The other times is when somebody fires a tether, when somebody uses a weapons of light bubble near a tether. The tether kind of breaks there. Sometimes there'll be an invisible platform and it'll have you underneath the floor. Honestly, guys, it's very avoidable, a lot of these bugs, if you do it a few times. But in the beginning, I definitely see why people were annoyed by this. Finally, let's talk about the aesthetics of the raid. The beauty of this raid is honestly unmatched. I think the only thing that comes close is Dreaming City and Last Wish Raid. I think Last Wish Raid is the only thing that compares in the sheer beauty and scale of this raid. I do think that the Dreaming City is always going to be my personal favorite looking area. However, the Black Garden definitely is number two in some parts, even number one. Like when you're in the trees, when you're running around through the chest sections, all that. That's really, really well done. I also think that the music here is the best music they have ever made by far in any raid. I don't think that there's a point where I've turned off my Spotify playlist while I'm streaming to 
enjoy the music here, I think it's definitely the best music that they've ever made. As far as weapons go, I honestly think that some of these weapons are super, super unique and that's what we needed out of the raid. The number one example that I have off the top of my head is the Pulse Rifle, the Sacred Provenance. It's the only Pulse Rifle in the game that can drop with rapid hit. As far as the rest of the weapons, Prophet of Doom is a precision frame shotgun, which means it's going to be super accurate with headshots and just the spread is a lot tighter with one two punch. That means that you're pretty much going to land your one two punch every single time. As far as the sniper goes, it's a 140 with a ton of ammo and it's a rapid fire frame, so it's just going to slay in PvP. The fusion rifle sounds great, the auto rifle sounds great, and honestly is a really, really fun weapon to use. If they ever nerf recluse, honestly, I'd be on the lookout for people using that. The Ancient Gospel is a solar version of the Nation of Beasts if you can get the Dragonfly Outlaw roll, and it can even drop with some really cool rolls in and of itself. The gear looks amazing, the emblem looks cool, and finally, let's talk about the Divinity. So, Divinity. This weapon is really really unique and i kind of knew it was going to be the raid weapon from the beginning you know every other exotic was pretty hive looking this one was pretty vex looking so you had to have known that this is probably going to be the raid weapon i think divinity is a spectacular weapon i think it's one that's very unique it's one that you're gonna have to have one player using while everybody else using something else it creates a crit spot and it stacks with everything else which means it's a very unique weapon that stacks by itself it isn't like tractor where it applies a debuff no divinity is a crit so it will stack with anything and it creates crits on enemies that don't always have crits for this quest what's even cooler is that you have to track back through the raid which means that they took the concept from touch of malice from king's fall and pushed it even further with touch of malice for those who remember after you beat oryx you would get the quest to drop and then you would work on the touch of malice eventually coming back beating the raid again eventually doing some things but it was always kind of you had to beat the raid before you got it with divinity you have to do all the steps and then do some puzzles within the raid the quest takes place within the raid it's one giant puzzle and thankfully people found this and got this done within about a day or two but that's still really really cool that there's secret areas in the raid that are for divinity and it honestly evolves the concept of where vaults of glass was where there was a bunch of secret areas that people kept finding the six chest all those rumors it really gave me that feeling of nostalgia for that and it also pushed the envelope even further making this honestly a true sequel to vault of glass's raid so my overall thoughts on garden of salvation I do think that this is an all-time great raid. Obviously, it's their once a year raid. This is just how it is with these raids. If it's the once a year raid, it's going to be great. That's just how it is. Where does it rank on my list though? So after a lot of reconsideration on my tier list, and I will probably make a video revisiting the tier list, I actually think Last Wish is my favorite raid ever made. I just, I still have so much fun. I still get excited to play it after 120 plus clears of it. I still get excited. I do think that Garden is going to be an all-time classic raid for me though just because the final encounter, the views of the area, the music, and some of the other fighting where you have to constantly be moving. I do think that the third encounter kind of is a little bit disappointing for a boss fight. It's really quick and on contest mode it was really fun but now it's just kind of eh, I don't know. One team does everything. I do think that this raid though is an all time and I would probably put it just below Last Wish and Wrath of the Machine right up there with King's Fall and Vault of Glass. Anyway guys, if you did enjoy this video, you hate my opinion, you like my opinion, let me know in the comments down below. Also if you did enjoy, leave a like on the video and uh, I will see you guys later. Hope to catch you on Twitch. Love you. Bye bye.